and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to go over a quick introduction into controllables using the linear drives, which allow us to move something in a single direction up or down, left or right or forward or backwards, and the angular drives, which allow us to rotate something between two certain limits. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at, and it really helps to fund these videos. So we've got a basic scene, and in this scene, we've just got four simple meshes, just four cubes, and we're going to turn each of these into a different type of controllable. So let's start by installing the controllables package. We do that by going to Window, down to Tilia, then to the Package Importer, then find the Interactions controllables package, and we can add that to our project. And when that's added, we can close the Package Importer down. And now we've got four different meshes that we're going to turn into the four different types of controllable that we have. To do that, we can use another helper. So we can go to Window, down to Tilia, Interactions, and we now should have the controllable creator. So we can select that, and it brings up the controllable creator window. We have four options at the moment. We have the linear joint drive, the linear transform drive, the angular joint drive, and the angular transform drive. So what we're going to do is just change each one of these simple meshes into each one of these controllables and then go through each one in a bit more detail. So let's do the linear joint first, just a simple cube. We'll select linear joint drive in our controllable creator and click convert. And we can see that's now converted into the linear joint drive prefab. Next is the linear transform. So we just select linear transform and click convert. And the same for the angular joint, convert and the angular transform, convert. So they're all converted into controllables now. Let's close our controllable creator and we'll go through what each one does. So a linear drive is a drive that moves in just one direction. So this one is by default set up to move across the x-axis. So that means we can move this between these two extreme points and we can change the direction that can move. So if we look at our drive axis here, we can see we can make it move across the three different axes. So at the moment it's set to the x-axis, so it will move across that yellow line we can see there. If we set it to y, we can see the extremes is now going up to down. And we can set it to Z, which means we can move it forward or backwards. We'll set this to Y for now. And because this is a linear joint drive, what this is actually doing is it's using a unity joint internally to allow us to move this up and down. And that gives us some benefits is that a unity joint is within the physics system, which means we can interact with this controllable with other rigid based objects to push it around. Now, if we don't want to be able to control this with other rigid based objects and we don't want it to interact within the physics system, we can then use the transform drive. So transform drives work exactly the same as the joint drives, except they don't use joints. So they don't need rigid bodies that will be interacted with with other physics bodies within the system. But you'll notice both of the settings on them are identical. So if we select the linear joint drive, we can see the settings there. And if we select the linear transform drive, we can see the settings are the same. And we'll set this one to the y axis as well. We can set both of these up at the same time by selecting both of them. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to limit the distance that they can actually travel. So this drive limit is set to one, which means it's a unit of one that it can travel in either direction. We're just going to make this a bit smaller, set it to 0.3. And we can see the gizmo is now showing this is the minimum that it can be, this is the maximum that it can be. And that's all we need to do to set up our linear drives. So if we were to grab these, we'd be able to drag it all the way up to the top, but it wouldn't go past that point. And drag it all the way down to the bottom, but it wouldn't go past that point and that would work for both of them. Let's have a look at the angular drives, and then we'll come back and look at more settings on each of the drive facades. So the same for the angular drives, we have a joint drive, which uses an internal unity joint to control the rotation of the object, and then we have the transform drive, which doesn't use a joint at all, so again, it's out of the physics system. And again, both of them have the same settings, so we could select both of these, and then we can change the axis that it rotates around. So at the moment, this will rotate around the x-axis, so it would rotate this way. We could rotate it around its y-axis, as we can see now the gizmo has changed, or we can rotate it around its z-axis, so it will rotate in front of us. And we'll also change the limit of how much we can rotate it. By default, it's set to minus 180 to 180. There is no limit on this. You can have these limits as high as you like, and it will just continually rotate. So it's not limited to what the Unity limits are, which is in older versions of Unity, minus 180 to 180. And I think in the latest versions of Unity, the joint limits are now minus 360 to 360. But both of these drives will allow you to go past that limit and allow you to go up to 720, 1000, 5000, whatever you want. So we're just going to limit this to minus 70 and 70. And there we go. We've set up four very simple controllables. 
these two over here are our linear drives and they will just at the moment move up and move down when we grab them and the joint one will be able to be controlled by an external force so this pig which is a tracked interactable object will be able to push this joint around as well but it won't be able to push this one because the transform drives can't be interacted by external forces and then we have our two angular drives as well which will allow us to have some sort of rotational motion around our object so before we jump into the scene and see that working let's just have a look at all of our drives and see what else they offer so if we look at our linear drives we can see we have the axis which we've looked at the drive speed is the speed it moves at when we're using the target value settings the drag settings determine how much drag is applied to the object when we've grabbed it and how much it's applied to the object when we ungrab it so if we have a low drag on ungrab and we release with a certain amount of velocity that control will keep moving with that level of velocity until it slows down naturally due to that drag then we have target value settings and what these allow us to do is start the target in a specific position so by default it's starting in its central point if we wanted to start it in its minimum point we can click the start at initial target value and then drag this all the way down to zero and then if we wanted to see what that looked like in our scene view we can just click align to initial target value and that will show us that's where it's going to start at its minimum point if we want to start at its maximum point again we can drag it all the way to one align to initial target value and that will show us where it will start when we start our scene the next option is move to target value and what this does is it pushes the controllable to the target value that we set so we can automatically move that control without needing to grab it and there's certain reasons that we'd want to do that which we'll explore in future videos the next settings are the step range settings and again i'm not going to go into too much detail on this now because we will go into this in future videos but if you think of your controllable as having different step points on it we can use these step settings to determine the top would be step zero the bottom would be step one or the top could be step zero the bottom could be step two and the middle could be step one and we would know when we're in each of those specific steps and then if we were released between a step we could then get the controllable to snap to that step for us using that drive speed so it can only be in one of three positions and we will look at that later in other videos as well and then finally we have the drive limit which allows us to set how far up and down this drive across the axis it will go we also do have a number of events on the controllables when the value changes and in a linear drive this means it's positional change and in an angular drive that means it's rotational change we get the updated value when its step value changes so as i said if we had a simple one which is zero one and two at the bottom when we move between those three values we'd get the step value change our normalized value is basically when it goes between the zero to one point when we've got a target value set and when we've reached that we get it we also get an event when the controllable starts moving and when it stops moving and these events are the same for both the linear and the angular drives we can see they're the same in both if we're to look at the angular drive as well we can see most of the settings are identical here they have drive axis drive speed they have drag settings they have target value settings they have step settings we also have our drive limits which is our angles but we also have a hinge location so by default the hinge location is in the center but if we wanted to rotate around one of the corners we could simply move that to the desired location so as we can see i've moved that hinge location up here which means this object would now rotate around that hinge point and not the center but for this example we're just going to go around the center and there we go we've got our four controllables set up let's jump into the scene and we'll have a quick look at what they do so now we're in the scene we can see our linear joint drives here if we was to grab one and move it we can see i can pull it up and down and it can't go past those limits that we've added and again for the other one we can grab drag and drop and push that up if i was to grab our pig over here we can see if i push it onto the transform drive it can't actually affect it but if we push it onto our joint drive we can see we can actually affect our joint drive with our grabbed object let's move over to the angular drives so with our angular drives we can see if we grab them they will now spin around that z axis as we have set up and this is the joint drive so again we can pick up our pig and we can see we can actually interact with that with an external object with our transform drive we can see we can control the rotation in the same way and if we were to try and control it with our pig we can see that cannot interact with it and there we go we've set up four simple controllables as i say we are going to do some future videos showing how we can use these controllables to create interactable controls that we will be able to use in different manners i hope this video has been useful to you if it has please consider subscribing to the youtube channel leave any likes dislikes comments down below 
please consider becoming a VITK patron and I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.